<laughs> okay, guys, let's start. Um, all right, let me just. Is my PC hanging again? I think we have the same problem. All right, we finished on. Uh, I need to reduce the size here. We finished. Uh, we were dealing with swap driven issues. Can you guys on the last bench, can you see Sina? Yes. You can see? Okay. Uh, all right. Now, uh, let's so the point that uh, was already raised by Dipamshu and uh, partly by Gaba in the previous class is that swap driven issuance can also involve two different currencies. Okay. So I'll just show you that example. Now we are referring to, I've just uh, clustered the text together. I'll split it up because I, there's a reason for doing that because I want to discuss, I want to cap, uh, I want to capture these two images in the same view. That's why I've clustered all the text together. It looks unfriendly and I'll change it later on once we have covered this topic. So swap driven issuance can involve two currencies as well. Let's open that book once again. So you already saw swap driven issuance where the issuer initially issued in uh, in um, wait for it to open. Initially, the issuer issued in uh, floating rate dollars and then swapped into fixed rate dollars using a fixed floating IRS. Remember that? Okay. So, we are now going to look at a case. So, that we said is a case of swap driven uh, issuance. I think that was on page 7. Yeah. This thing is, I don't know how big it is. Is it? All right. Here we said that the what you see in figure one is a swap is a case of swap driven issuance because the reason we say that is because there's no natural uh, uh, invest uh, there's no natural desire on the part of the issuer to issue in floating rate dollars so it's a kind of an artificial issue in floating rate dollars which you see because he's only doing it there because uh, his investment banker has told him that there is investor demand in floating rate dollars for floating rate dollar debt so issue there and then we will give you a swap into fixed rate dollars okay so that's why we say that this floating rate uh, leg the figure one the figure one phenomenon we say is swap driven issuance that's a pcm transaction okay in the deck in the dcm in debt capital markets so uh this is what you have so the point here is that in this particular example all the cash flows are in us dollars so this is your swap okay where the two cash flows are exchanged and both the cash flows are in us dollars so the point that the function brought up was that of course you can have this even in uh, in two different currencies so refer to figure 16 the middle panel on page 14 so let's go to page 14 okay so we will study those categories of swaps so let's by, by middle panel i mean this part the periodic payments okay this is the example that somebody was talking about exchange of principle who was it yesterday that was talking about exchange of principle somebody was asking about i think you were asking about the uh, how does the dealer manage the risk and all that okay so these transactions are fairly complicated and so the dealer would have to take all the risk management decisions whether to hedge or not to hedge okay but we just focus on the periodic payments because this is actually this figure is not created to show swap driven issues but i'm artificially showing swap driven issues i'm going to focus on the right hand part of it which is the uh, a part between SCB and XYZ Corp. Okay, so here again, you can see, we can imagine that this is swap driven issuance in, in is, this is what, this particular issue that you see that uh, these guys have made, okay, uh, you can actually see the issue in the first part where they uh, issue a bond and they get $150 million. Okay, that's the bond issue proceeds. Okay, we are assuming there's no underwriting fee, etc. And here they are paying this kind of fee. So this is a what? Floating rate debt instrument or fixed rate? Both. Yes? Both. What both? No, I'm not. I'm talking about the the debt issue that XYZ Corp has made in this particular figure. Is that a floating rate issue or a fixed rate? Why do you say that? What interest are they paying? What what interest are they paying? What interest are they paying in the second in the middle panel on the right hand side here? Forget about the left hand side of this panel. They are paying what? 
what are they paying here? So here it doesn't mention what length. Let's assume it's three month LIBOR. Okay. So they're paying three month LIBOR plus 50 basis points on a debt issue. Is that debt issue a floating issue or a floating? It's floating. Should be straight away apparent from the word LIBOR. The moment you see the word LIBOR, it means that it's a euro deposit interest rate. Okay. So there must it must be a floating issue. Okay, so it's a it's a debt instrument where they have issued that debt instrument. They got 150 million dollars as uh, issue proceeds. Okay, and now they are paying her a LIBOR plus 50 basis points. So this is a floating issue. All right, this is clear to everyone. Yes. Okay. All right. So now they've issued that debt instrument. Now, as I said here, this is we are artificially considering this is another case of swap driven issuance. So which means that XYZ Corp had no interest in issuing floating rate dollars. They have no interest in that. Let's assume that they are a uh, British company. Let's assume they're a, they're a UK based uh, uh, company and all their revenues are in uh, British pounds. Okay. So if you're a UK based company and all your revenues are in British pounds, what is the uh, prudent risk management as if you are going to be a prudent risk manager in what currency should you issue debt is my question clear yes yes or no Sahil? yeah if you're if you are a british company and you all your revenues are in british pounds in as a prudent risk manager in what currency should you issue debt british pounds okay you should match your revenues Revenues are your assets and debt will become a liability. Okay, so you should the, the prudent principle is you should match your assets and liabilities. Okay, so therefore you should issue in uh, British pounds. But once again, the investment banker tells them that there is no investor. Let's say whatever this is. I don't know how long. Let's be consistent with the example. Um, whatever it says here, maybe whatever the number of years. Okay, uh, seven year swap. Okay. So it's a seven year swap, let's assume. Okay. So they, they want to issue seven year fixed rate sterling. They want to lock in their rates as well, their funding costs. They don't want to have any uncertainty. So uh, XYZ's uh, preference, the CFO of XYZ would prefer to issue a fixed rate sterling. Okay. Because he wants to lock in his interest costs and he doesn't want to have a currency mismatch. All right. So, but the investment banker tells him that, sorry, there is no investor appetite for $150 million of debt in the fixed rate sterling debt markets. Nobody wants to buy this fixed rate sterling bonds. Okay. And as I told you, because of all kinds of restrictions on the uh, in institutional investors who buy debt, you will very often face these kind of situations where there is some kind of an odd mismatch, like there's no demand for selling debt in fixed rate yen, but there is some demand in floating rate Australian dollars. Okay, so these kinds of uh, you know uh, dislocations, mismatches will always be there uh, in investor preferences. So the investment banker tells him, sorry, there's no demand for selling fixed rate sterling debt, but there is demand for floating rate dollar debt, and the swap is favorable. Okay, so suppose their their um, their target cost of funds, let's assume, is 11 percent. Their let's say for cost of debt, their cutoff is more, uh, not more than 11 percent. Okay, are you following? If you don't follow at a point of time, please ask. Okay, so let's assume that because every treasury is going to have some kind of limit, yes. they can't expect you can't expect them to issue debt no matter what the price. Okay, so they will have some kind of let's assume that their cutoff is 11%. Okay, so then the investment banker tells them because remember the investment bankers are monitoring both sides, they are monitoring the because they have a swap desk as well as part of their market making operations. Okay, in, in interest rate swap, so they have a swap desk as well, the big investment banks. So the swap desk will tell them that these are the swap prices, okay, and they will tell you that you can swap from fixed rate uh, sterling. You can you can have a swap where you have ten and a half percent, where you pay ten and a half percent in fixed rate sterling. You can see this part of the swap here, okay. So they get this pricing from the swaps desk, from the market maker on the swaps desk. So he tells you that if you want a swap where you receive uh, dollar LIBOR plus fifty basis points and you pay fixed rate sterling at ten and a half percent. If you want to swap like that, this market rate is available right now. Okay, so then what what that happens? What happens there is the investment bank, uh, the distribution side, the distribution team on the investment bank is able to figure out from the investors that they are happy to buy seven year FRN. Okay, they're happy to buy a seven year FRN for 150 million at a pricing of dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points. Okay, so if you combine that debt service liability here with the swap price that is available from the swap desk okay you can see that xyz corp is able to achieve its target 
currency liability profile we use the word liability profile here all this is written down in your notes already so you'll have uh, enough uh, information there just try to understand the concept okay so this we call a liability profile which means when you look at your uh, liabilities your debt okay what is the currency denomination of the debt okay what is the tenor of the debt what is it floating rate or fixed rate all these aspects we call it the liability profile just like we have a student profile we look at the students we say okay what did he do in his undergrad what grades did he get in his first year and things like that so these are all aspects of the student profile so similarly here the liability profile typically you are concerned with how much debt is there in a particular currency what is the tenor of the debt whether it's fixed or floating all these things so uh, we say here that xyz corp through the swap okay on a net basis if you consider the hedge position and the underlying position remember here this is the underlying position because they are forced to issue at floating rate dollars even though they don't want to because that's where the investor demand is okay and uh, here they do a swap so this is the hedge is this clear because here they don't want to have this underlying position because there's a currency mismatch and they also don't want floating rate debt okay so they do this swap as a hedge this is the underlying position this is the hedge position okay so but net of the underlying because the only thing that matters is the net of the two remember the hedge position plus the underlying position is what you are concerned with okay when you have not hedged at all your hedge position is zero so all you have is the underlying position so between, when you look at the net of the two then do they have what is their net cost of funding and what is the profile xyz corp in the middle panel mm -hmm. Wake up, everybody. So like 10.5% percent live water, 50 basis points. No. Rahul, what is XYZ's Corp's net cost of funding after doing the hedge? In what currency? Uh, in the middle panel. Is my question clear? net of the underlying position and the hedge position what is their net cost of funding you look at the middle panel on the right hand side is this right for you as well yeah on the right hand side uh, in the middle panel you look at xyz corps underlying position and, and and hedge position then you tell me what is their net cost of funding in what currency whatever yes prachi can you help what happened is my question clear? So, what is your answer? LIBOR plus 50 basis points. That's their net cost of funding. No. Okay, what about VIBOV? No. Pallavi? No. Is my question clear? Why is my... Okay, what is not clear about my question? I am asking you... You are already familiar having done the previous uh, project in the previous uh, course the concept of underlying position and hedge position yes. that once you start hedging actively the only thing that matters is the net of the two positions right yes. your underlying position plus your hedge position you have to see the net position okay so here is there any uh, lack of clarity about what is the underlying position yes. Sina is there any lack of clarity about what the underlying position is yes. you give him the mic give the mic to Sahil Sina is not clear so why if you are not clear why aren't you asking questions why are people is my question clear so my question is what is if you include the underlying position and the hedge position and I've already explained to you what is the hedge position and what is the underlying position is there any lack of clarity about those about what is the underlying position what is the hedge position so what is so complicated about this is like just looking at some pictures and figuring out <laughs> this is so easy its answer is there on the sheet uh, on the on the panel itself. Yes, Sahil, go ahead. Sorry. I'm not sure, but yeah, just just tell me whatever you feel. Yeah. Underlying position is LIBOR plus 15 basis points, and the edge position is 10.5. Uh, then the net will be uh, LIBOR plus 50 minus 10.5. Still not satisfactory. Anybody else wants to answer? Ishan, can you help us? No. Okay. You don't want to help us or you can't help us? <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, anybody else? Who else? Dina, will you help us? Not clear? Dipankshu will help. Give him the mic. My question is clear? 
So I'm just asking what is your net like suppose your underlying position is you were long 100 million dollars worth of crude oil okay and then in your hedge position you sold 50 million dollars worth of crude oil or 70 million dollars in the hedge position you sold 70 million dollars of crude oil so your net position is your long 30 million dollars of crude oil worth of crude oil right one minute yeah so what is the net position of xyz corp okay okay let's not waste any more time okay okay guys now just one sec just switch off the mic and i'll tell you okay look at this now, what is so complicated about this this dollar libor this is going out mm. outflow you understand yes. why is this going out because they have issued a seven year 150 million dollar frn yes. at uh, dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points okay three month dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points so every three months they have to pay this amount whatever the LIBOR fixing is okay so that's one part of the uh, this is the underlying position okay the underlying debt position now they've done us uh, as a hedge transaction they have done a this this thing is called a cross currency we'll look at the taxonomy later on but this thing is called a cross currency interest rate swap okay because it's got two currencies okay that's why we call it you already seen the irs yes. if you assume that this sterling thing was not there here okay if you assume that the sterling thing which i have hidden with that cursor suppose this ten and a half was a dollar interest rate uh, amount okay it's a dollar fixed rate then this transaction you've already seen before yes. in your figure one and figure two you've already seen this transaction before yes. where one party is paying a fixed rate the other party is receiving a, a paying a floating rate okay so all we are saying is now we are just changing the structure of the swap a little bit instead of having only one currency we are doing what the function was asking for yesterday we have now two currencies in the swap one leg is in sterling one leg is in us dollars okay so this thing is called a cross currency irs okay we'll we'll give you the notation and all, all the uh, names later on you don't need to note down anything but uh, just understand this that's all we are doing is everyone clear about this at this point okay so this is a hedge transaction yes akaksha what part is confusing your expression says that you are not happy with the explanation you're not uh, fully uh, you're not fully on board so which part is not clear yes no need to be shy just tell me what is not clear i mean you you, you seem to be not clear about something which not in agreement with what i'm saying which part? I class, so give her, give her. Oh, so you missed a class. Oh, you definitely need a mic because your voice is quite soft. Okay. Yeah. Now it's no longer audio, so now you can look at look at the video and see because then you'll get the chart as well. Okay. All right. Okay. So fine. So now. Um, okay. So what was I saying? I was just explaining. Okay. So the net position. So the underlying position is clear to everyone. They have to service a floating rate liability. They have floating rate debt because they issued an FRN. Okay. So they have to service this liability now to the investors. They have to pay them every three months. They don't like this because they have only sterling revenues and they have to service dollar liabilities. And plus it's a floating rate liability. They don't want any of this business. They want to lock. They want to have a liability profile that is uh, fixed rate sterling. That's what the treasury wants. Okay. That is the preferred liability profile because that will match their currency of re revenue currency and it's also fixed rate debt. It's not floating rate. So the cash flows become certain. Okay. So they're a converse conservative treasury. So therefore what they do is they ask for a price from Sanchard for uh, a cross currency IRS and Sanchard says that, okay, if you want to, because what they want to do is they want to match, they want to match the, uh, the dollar liability. Okay. So they they asked Stanchard to uh, uh, give a price on an interest rate swap, where uh, X Y Z will receive floating rate dollars three month uh, three month U S dollar LIBOR plus fifty BP. Why did they ask for this kind of pricing? Because here they don't really need to. They can just ask for three month dollar LIBOR, and then that dollar fifty BP extra will be a fixed rate cost for them. But that will remain in dollars. So they want to match. They want to completely remove the currency risk okay so they asked for a price on an interest rate swap where they will receive dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points on the floating leg these two legs are called this is called the fixed leg and this is called the floating leg not too complicated there are two legs to the swap just like you have a stool which has two legs okay 
so the two legs uh, you have two legs uh, you want to have three legs in the stool so we'll give you three legs okay <laughs> so uh, we'll give you so here here the swap has only two legs okay one floating leg one fixed leg all right so what there's what Stanchard what uh, XYZ is saying to Sanchard is that I want to I want give me a price for a cross currency IRS sterling USD cross currency IRS where I will receive three month dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis point on the floating leg now you tell me in exchange for this how much do you want me to pay in fixed rate sterling is this clear is this question clear to everyone Nikhil you are not following which part are you not following <laughs> no, no, I'm not giving a question, right? My question was, what was the net position? My question was, what is the net position? You understand original, you understand underlying position, hedge position? You understand all that? Okay. So my question is that, uh, so what I'm saying is, this is the underlying position because of their liability that they have taken on, they have issued an FRN. So now they have to pay this three month dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points for seven years to investors. So that's their underlying position. Okay now they have put on a hedge transaction they want to put on a hedge transaction by means of a cross currency irs because the net result that they want to achieve is they want to achieve a situation where their debt is denominated in fixed rate sterling okay their debt is denominated in fixed rate sterling so obviously just like you remember earlier in your risk management project the when you want to hedge you don't disturb the underlying position you keep the underlying position as it is okay you set up a parallel position through your hedge book right but the parallel position is such that it offsets your underlying position so that on a net basis you are hedged okay that's the idea of hedging all right so <coughs> so what they do is they want to create a net result where they are paying fixed rate sterling on a net basis so what they want to do so think about how you would ask for the swap to be structured you look at your underlying position what is your objective? You want to cancel out any dollar liability yes. and you know that in a swap, what happens in a swap? So far, you've already seen now two types of swaps. You have two opposing cash flows. One party is paying fixed or floating and, and he is receiving floating or fixed. Yes. Is this much clear to everyone? Yes. The structure of a swap. Okay. That is how it works. It's a swap. So there's an exchange. Okay. So they are going to ask for a price for sterling USD cross currency IRS. Okay. So what is what do they want to do? They have look if you look out if you look at their objectives, you'll figure out what kind of swap they would want to have. Okay. What do they want to have? First of all, they don't want to have anything to do with the dollar floating rate dollar liability. All right. Because they are they are they have no revenues in US dollars and they don't like floating rate risk. Okay. So therefore, in whatever swap they do, okay, in the hedge transaction, you know that the swap will have two cash flows, two flows. One is the floating leg, one is the fixed leg and they will receive on one leg and pay on the other leg yes, that much is also clear because it's a swap so it has to be equal you can't receive on both the legs or you won't pay on both the legs I, you receive on one hand with one hand and with the other hand you pay right so that is what the swap is so you know that as well now if you think about what they want to achieve you'll be able to figure out what will be there on the two legs of the swap how the swap will be structured so the first thing they want to achieve is they want to get rid of any kind of dollar liability floating rate dollar liability so what they have to do is what do they have on the underlying position they are paying us dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points so therefore one leg of the swap has to be such that there is an inflow of this which will cancel this outflow yes is this clear yes. first make sure this is clear everyone should be clear about this so now what are you drawing irs you're drawing an irs chart so please concentrate on what is being taught in the class okay is everyone clear up to this point how the thinking will proceed if you're working in a corporate treasury how the thinking will when you're doing structured transactions okay you should be clear about what you want to achieve if you're clear about what you want to achieve then you will know what to look for in a hedge transaction okay you want to achieve a complete elimination of your dollar floating rate uh, liability okay so therefore what you want to have is a situation where we are not dealing with exchange of principle that principal liability is more complicated we'll come to that later okay let's assume that these are perpetual bonds okay and there's no need to pay the principal so we'll leave that just focus on the interest liability first okay every year every three months they have to pay dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points they have no dollar revenues so they want to completely eliminate the dollar liability okay so therefore on one leg of the hedge transaction they must receive the full amount of what they're paying in the underlying position is that clear 
logically okay so i therefore must receive on the floating reg i must receive dollar libor plus 50 basis point so that this inflow will cancel this outflow is that clear okay so that take that part is taken care of now can they of course abc's xyz would like it to be just that and they don't have to pay anything but then a stand chart is not going to agree to that because it's a swap so they also have to pay something okay so they have borrowed money so they have to pay something and what do they want to pay they want to pay fixed rate sterling so they will tell stand chart that you give me a swap where i am receiving us dollar libor plus 50 bp on the floating leg and i am paying fixed rate sterling now you tell me how much fixed rate sterling you want me to pay are you following when you ask somebody for a price this is one way of asking for a price okay it's a slightly uh, i mean this is not how market makers would ask for a price but as a customer you can always ask a bank for a price like this to structure the transaction and give me a fixed rate sterling for which you are happy to pay which is according to the again you see the idea of equivalence yes. if i am able to pay 10 and a half percent sterling fixed rate and receive dollar libor plus 50 basis points that means in the eyes of the swap market these two cash flows are equal yes. can we say that because they are being exchanged for each other yes. okay is that clear to everyone yes all in agreement yes. can we say that by work you're not convinced <laughs> in any market transaction okay if you go and buy coffee for 50 rupees then we can say that one cup of coffee and one 50 rupee note are the are equivalents of each other because you were willing they were able to, uh, willing to exchange it any market transaction that exchange happens where you can easily say that the terms asset and base asset are equivalents at that price okay is that clear yes okay so therefore we can so so therefore what they will say is what uh, the way that going back uh, step wise once again instead of coming to the answer because remember that uh, the objective of xyz corp is to uh, convert their liabilities to fixed rate sterling so they will not they will want to do a cross currency irs with stand chart and they will ask them this way that you give me the sterling fixed rate that for you is an equivalent uh, to dollar libor plus 50 basis points so essentially you give me a swap price okay it's a cross currency irs that i want to do with you and on the floating reg of the swap i want to receive uh, dollar libor plus 50 basis points now you tell me how much you want to receive on the how much you want me to pay on the fixed rate sterling this is clear it's just like saying i want to buy your house you tell me how much so i will take your house and you tell me how much money you want me to give okay is that clear you ask for a price in this way like will you sell us bumper hall pen you remember that case yeah. what's that case which you did in contracts offer versus invitation to treat no. not doubt that is harvey versus facey yeah. which is uh, the first case you did on offer versus invitation to treat so is this point clear to everyone now are you following what yes <laughs> Yes. Yeah. This chartered bank is asking X Y Z Corporation uh, to give it one fifty million dollars, and second chartered bank is giving. No, no, no. There's no one fifty million dollars. That forget about that one fifty million. That is the principal raised in the. That is the money raised in the uh, FRN issue. Forget about that. I am now talking only about the interest flows. We are now talking only about the interest flows. Here you say it. See in this middle panel, we talk about periodic payments. Okay. So forget about the interest uh, with the principal part right now. Okay, just focus and let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. First, let's be clear about the principal uh, the interest payments. Is this clear to everyone now so far? Are you following? Why the hedge transaction will be structured like this? Because obviously one leg of the hedge transaction has to be such that it can completely cancels the dollar liability. So therefore, since they have an outflow on the dollar bond, they have an outflow of dollar LIBOR plus 50 basis points. Therefore, on the uh, in the swap, one leg has to be such that they have an inflow of the same thing. Therefore, the inflow and outflow will cancel out. That part is clear. Now, if it's a swap, then they can't just be receiving on one side. They have to pay something also on the other side. So therefore, what do they want to pay? What is the net liability profile they want? They want to have a liability in fixed rate sterling right so they ask the bank uh, because they have to ask the bank because the bank is the other side okay i can't just say that i'm buying your house and uh, like felt house versus buying lee i'm going to take your house and all i'm paying for you is uh, uh, is uh, 50 lakhs 
okay i can't just decide it on my own i need to have your view also because it's your property that i'm buying right so similarly when they're entering into a transaction with stand chart if they if they specify that on the floating leg i want to receive dollar libor plus 50 basis points then they'll have to ask stand chart now what do you want me to pay on the fixed leg in sterling 10.5% Okay, so then in this case, is this point clear how the negotiation will go? Okay, so therefore uh, now then Stanchart has said that okay, you pay us 10.5% fixed rate sterling, that is good enough for us, we are happy to do this swap. Okay, so now if they do that swap, what is their net? So all I was asking was, now they have completed the hedge transaction, the swap is the hedge transaction. Okay, what is happening? What is the uh, Tanvi looking at? Phone. What? Don't look down. Look, look at what is being taught. Okay, because people are not able to answer questions. If if everybody is able to answer questions uh, very quickly, then I can still understand that you're so bored and you're so smart and you've covered everything so well that it's this class is a waste of time for you. But people are not able to answer questions. Okay, all right. So now, uh, so this is the hedge transaction, the fixed rate sterling, uh, and the uh, floating rate dollars. So this is a cross currency IRS. We call it a cross currency IRS. Because there are two currencies. Okay. All right. So now, Ned, now I repeat my question. Okay. Tanuj, I'm repeating my question. Now, net, net of the, including the underlying position and the hedge position. Okay. Uh, what is the net cost of, de what is the net liability profile of uh, XYZ Corp? By liability profile, I mean what currency and what fixed or uh, floating. Sir, not, taken not taken yesterday's class. So, who will answer? Nakpal? <coughs> is my question clear? What is the net liability profile after adjusting the uh, the hedge position against the underlying position? What is the net liability profile of XYZ Corp? 10.5. 10.5 in which currency? Sterling. Yes. Sterling. 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 Okay. So that's the correct answer. Okay. It's very simple because this is just a matter of cancelling out the arrows. Okay. We're seeing which arrows are cancelling each other out. Okay. So the inflow of dollar LIBOR on the cross currency IRS cancels the outflow of dollar LIBOR on the loan. On the loan servicing side, the dollar LIBOR, both the flows are going to happen. Okay. Uh, in that sense, in the sense, at least the underlying flow will happen because that you can't disturb the arrangement with the FRN investors. The so the principle remains the same that when you hedge, you don't disturb the underlying position. So that arrangement remains the same. So this cash flow will have to keep on going to the bond bond uh, trustee. Okay, you'll have to keep paying this money on the swap. The how the swap is settled is every three months. Okay, they will look at what is the uh, dollar LIBOR. Okay. What is the dollar LIBOR fixing? What is the liability? LIBOR plus 50 basis points. They will look at the sterling liability, how much they have to pay, how much they have to receive. And then looking at the spot trade on that date, they will figure out who has to pay whom. Is this clear? Suppose you find 10.5% in sterling comes to some sterling, let's say 5 million sterling or something. And then the dollar part comes to $6 billion. Okay. So you use the sterling dollar spot trade on that day to figure out the, the dollar equivalent or something. And then the find out who owes money to who and there's only one payment okay there's a net payment made to settle the swap but conceptually you get the same effect okay so therefore as Nagpal has pointed out so the net cost of debt for xyz is now become fixed rate sterling at 10 10 and a half percent fixed rate sterling okay so now they have achieved the liability profile that they want although they still have both the transactions on the books they have the loan which has to be serviced and then they have also the interest rate swap on the book with that chart this is clear okay so now they have uh, uh, achieved what they want okay so this is the answer that i was looking for okay i don't know why it was so complicated but at least whatever it is doesn't matter but that's what this just con uh, confirms uh, my instructions you know just uh, sort of validates my instruction that when you don't understand uh, uh, a lot of the times you're not able to follow the structures uh, but you're not asking questions so eventually you'll end up in trouble okay so that's all we were saying okay so this entire long discussion is just to uh, give an example of what uh, Debakshu was referring to yesterday so once again here we will say that the uh, the US dollar FRN that was issued okay uh, at LIBOR plus 50 basis points that FRN was a case of swap driven issuance 
okay why do we say it's a case of swap driven issues because this xyz corporation had no natural interest to issue in uh, floating rate dollars they were only they were only doing it because the investor appetite is only for that in that segment of the debt market okay so we call these different segments of the debt market they would have preferred to issue in the fixed rate sterling segment of the debt market but the investment banker told them that there is no demand in that segment for your kind of 150 million dollars worth of seven year debt okay <laughs> but there is demand in the floating rate dollar market okay so then they kept in touch with the investment banker monitored the swap pricing levels and they figured out that they could get a uh, net cost of debt, which is, and remember this company, we have artificially said that this company's cutoff rate for uh, debt financing is 11% sterling. Okay, so at 10.5%, it is still below their cutoff rate, so they can go for it. Okay, so they found out that this is the pricing. So they eventually, so why is this swap driven issuance in the US dollar bond market? Okay, uh, and the US dollar FRN market, because there is no natural desire on the part of the issuer to issue there, they're only doing it because. Uh, that's where the ap investor appetite is and they have a swap a cross currency IRS sterling dollar which allows them to achieve their cost of funding the desired cost of funding at the in the desired liability pro and the desired liability profile and that's why this issue happened that's why we say this is a swap driven issuance in the sense it's not natural issuance in that sense it's certainly artificial okay is this clear to everyone so okay yes so what is their hedge position Hedge position is the swap. The position in the swap where they are paying, they are paying fixed rate sterling and receiving uh, floating rate dollars. Yes, so this will, these two will cancel out. The two flows will cancel out, and you'll be left with the fixed rate sterling. This is clear. Okay, so this is the hedge. So the entering into the swap is the hedge transaction, and the position that they have in the swap is the hedge position. Okay, so you can see that obviously XYZ, if you want to understand position, then XYZ's position is the opposite of SCB's position. SCB has the opposite position, right? Just like when I buy dollar yen, if I'm buying dollar yen from you, I am buying dollars, but you are selling dollars. And after the transaction, that's a transaction. After we have done the transaction, my position will be long dollars, your position will be short dollars. <coughs> what happened? Uh, speak in English. You give him the mic. Let's hear you speak through the. Where's the mic? Pass the mic and let's have him speak through the mic. This we have already covered in, uh, I think, in IPM itself. The differences between hedge transaction and we've covered it in IFM also. Be very particular about uh, using the words transaction and position. A hedge transaction. If I buy dollar yen from you, I'm giving the example once again. If I buy dollar yen from you, okay then the hedge transaction i mean for my from my side the transaction is a purchase of dollars and the position will be the position that ha i have after that transaction is long dollars and from your side the transaction is sale of dollars and the position that you have after the transaction is short dollars okay so we have to be very particular about the use of words many people in the market are not particular but that's no excuse for you not to be particular is this clear Okay, so that's what I was saying. So obviously, in this transaction, is SCB's position is going to be the opposite of of uh, XYZ's. That is always true, right? If you do a transaction with somebody else, uh, then the, whatever your position is, his position is the opposite of yours. Is this clear? Okay. All right. So this is just to show you. Everyone clear about this so far? Okay. All to show you that swap driven issues can also involve two different currencies okay so all the references are given here everything is given here position desired liability position profile everything is given here now I'll just briefly I did not want to do this but uh, I will just go through this because we have already covered so many of these I think uh, it'll, it's an opportunity to cover the um, uh, uh, the concept of capital market what we call capital market swaps okay so when we refer to this here okay swaps here we will talk about two tr two swaps okay um, you can see uh, we will basically talk about two categories of swaps and one of those categories that I'll come to later on when we do foreign exchange swaps will be other other category but right now what I'm co covering with you guys is this concept of the um, uh, what do you call it? capital market swap okay 
now this in the industry is referred to i just want to cover there are five types of these okay so i just want to quickly go through it's very simple to understand okay if you go through it logically because i've already covered two of the types of swaps with you okay we have already covered the fixed floating irs in one currency and, and we have already covered the cross currency irs with two currencies already two parts two types have been covered so we might as well logically go through and see the other five structures okay so uh, refer to page 6 rms but before that let's look at see ted ted here means ted sheet in the calc file okay in your calc file for this project okay which is here so let's just so everyone understands the basic structure of a swap okay now i'm calling them uh, these capital market swaps let me just briefly write it here okay This is the term I'm giving cap this terminology capital market swaps um, <coughs> because I want to distinguish it against uh, distinguish it with respect to FX swaps. Okay, the market is not that particular. I'm very particular about terminology. So in the market, they will just refer to the what I'm calling capital market swaps in the industry. They'll refer to it only as swaps. Okay, the reason I'm calling them capital market swaps, there's a reason for this. Is that these swaps are frequently uh, issued used okay most of the usage of these swaps is in connection with the capital market issue either you had issued it immediate uh, you uh, you do the issue and immediately do the swap or you've done the issue a few years ago so there's always a capital market issue that is connected to this particular swap okay that's why i'm calling them capital market swaps you understand what i mean by capital market issue yeah. this is the capital market issue can you see that Raising capital. yeah is this a capital market issue you're issuing debt yes. in the capital market so you will find that these types of swaps swap structures the swap structure the basic structure of swap is very simple you'll have two different counterparties see the basic structure of, a, uh, of what i call a capital market swap which the industry will call just a swap okay so what is the basic structure one counterparty on this side one counterparty on this side that you need for any transaction okay two flows one party is paying something and the same party is also receiving something two opposite flows okay all right then the the uh, other part is that what now the question is we are going to now play with two things we are going to play with fixed rates and floating rates and currency one and or the whether single currency or dual currency okay so the, the basic structure is clear to everybody the basic structure of a swap there will be two counterparties and there will be one cash flow going to the counterparty and one cash flow coming uh, from the counterparty is this clear to everyone basic structure everyone is clear no issues rahul clear okay so now all we are going to do is so i'm calling them capital market swaps because they're connected always uh, connected to some kind of most of the time about 90 95 percent of the time they will be connected to capital market issues probably even more than that 98 percent of the time be very unusual to do this without a count, uh, underlying exposure uh, in a capital market instrument okay so here you have underlying exposure on account of the issuance of a us dollar frn okay that's your capital market transaction that's why i'm calling these capital market swaps is this clear to everyone yes. if you say capital market swaps to somebody in the industry you can explain it this way because these swaps are always connected they are done in connection with some kind of capital market issues now what might happen is you may do the two transactions absolutely simultaneously same day same hour or it may happen that maybe two years ago you issued a us dollar frn at that time you were not very concerned but this is like a seven year transaction, seven year bond, a seven year FRN. But now you have become suddenly very concerned about uh, floating rate dollar risk. So you could do it after two years, two years after doing the bond issue. But there's always a bond issue somewhere underlying to cover. Are you following what I'm saying? OK, so that's why I'm calling them capital market swaps. They are connected always to capital market transactions. So let's quickly go to your spreadsheet, the FinCalc spreadsheet. Have I got, how did I end up with IFM calc? No, this is not what I need. Okay. I need the, yeah, let me just take care of this. What I need is actually FDRM calc. Okay. So we are going to invest quickly, uh, almost like uh, in a logical sequence, we are going to just uh, identify 
the five types of swaps that you can have, five types of capital market swaps. So we go to the sheet called TED. Can you guys all see the sheets at the bottom? Can you see, Isha? So we go to TED where we had this uh, LIBOR just using, okay. Now what are we going to do? This is the class. First, let's get the conceptual uh, taxonomy clear and then it'll be so easy to just structure out the transactions, okay? So capital market swaps, we are saying there could be two basic types where both we already know the structure of the swap okay two parties one flow coming into this party and one flow going out of this party okay so we are going to play with two things either both the flows are going to be in one currency or one flow will be in one currency and then one other flow will be in some other currency so either the swap will feature one currency or it will feature two currencies is this clear so we have a first level categorization it will have two currencies or one currency and then uh, there are further let's look at now let's look at the example of one currency now one currency now we're going to play with one more thing so one variable we are playing is with 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 how many currencies okay so the first variable we are playing is playing with is the number of currencies in the swap it could either be one or it could be two okay the second variable now let's go into the one currency category okay under the one currency category there could be now we have to play with one more variable now they have two legs now there are two possibilities one both the legs could be uh, i mean one leg could be fixed one is floating that we have seen before okay there's another possibility which you have not seen before it is both the legs could be floating okay both the legs could be floating so you could have there's a name for this this is called a cross currency basis swap you'll see all those names in the book itself but the point is that you could have both legs as floating so understand this like i think somebody i think sahil was asking about this uh libor reference why libor reference so if you have a person in the us markets you can have many other floating rates you can have a three month treasury bill as a floating rate you can have cp rates you can have three month cp rates all right so you can have all kinds of different cp uh, different floating rates so the point is that libor is not <laughs> although libor is the most common floating rate okay but it's not the only possible floating rate you can have cp rates you can have uh, treasury bill rates. All of these are floating rates. Have you heard of bankers acceptances? Banking when you've done bill discounting? Yes. Okay. okay, so bankers ac acceptances are a form of bill discounting. Okay, it is basically all trade bills where the bank has essentially accepted that the bank will pay. So what you do is you get it, uh, you, have, you have all these things like factoring also, you must have studied factoring. Yes. These are all examples of uh, bill discounting kind of transactions where the uh, particular party is uh, it's like a negotiable instrument okay so here bankers acceptances means it's been accepted by Citibank that I would pay this uh, liability on this bill of exchange okay and then it will be paid in three months time so if Citibank is willing to pay has agreed to pay in three months time then other banks are also willing to buy that instrument because it carries Citibank's credit risk so they are okay with that is this clear so you have various the point to understand is that the that LIBOR is not the only floating rate you can have other kinds of floating rates okay so let's look just look at broad, uh, broadly get an overview and then so so the way you can vary it within the one currency category you can have two types of swaps one leg is floating one leg is fixed or both legs are floating it's clear okay so we'll see the example i'm just first giving you a broad overview and then under the two currency category you can have obviously you can't have both legs fixed because then there's no uh, uncertainty in the transaction okay so both legs fixed means there's no everything is clear you can't have both legs fixed in one currency okay now here what happens is the the second category is two currencies okay two different currencies on the two legs so the first category will be what you already saw in, on page 14 this is an example of that what are we looking at this category here two currencies one leg is fixed one leg is floating can you see this here guys what is this can you see this does it fit that category two different currencies one leg is fixed one leg is floating yes sir. here this is called a cross currency irs you'll see all the names here you don't need to wrote down the names but you've already seen this example okay what else this is so mechanical that even without knowing anything about swaps you can figure it out okay that's why i wanted to go through this overview first okay so one leg is fixed one leg is floating 
then again you can have both legs are floating which means here you will have one leg is sterling LIBOR one leg is dollar LIBOR this is clear both legs can be floating then here in the case of two currencies you can have uh, uh, both legs as fixed because here there is not perfect certainty because if you are receiving 5% sterling and paying say 2% uh, dollars okay when it comes if it's a 10 year transaction every uh, let's say the transaction is to be settled every six months okay every six months the sterling dollar rate is fluctuating so the actual liability is not clear who owes money to whom the reason you can't have fixed both legs fixed in one currency is uh, and this day to day marking is required not day to day mark to market actually uh, as a dealer you will have to do day to day to mark to market not marking mark to market m to m okay you have to say m to m okay so or, or mark to market so uh, so is this clear that in a in a in a two currency situation you can have fixed rates on both sides because it's not perfectly certain it's a 10 year transaction every six months there's a settlement now sterling dollar rate is fluctuating so you really don't know in advance who owes money to who is this clear okay so these are your five categories conceptually is everyone clear okay these are the five categories I'm covering this uh, without covering foreign exchange swaps here because these are connected we've had a long discussion on debt capital markets so I wanted to complete the discussion of uh, capital market swaps. so you have a comprehensive understanding okay so now you know conceptually there will be five categories of capital market swaps so now we can go to this part refer to page six of RMS what you're getting tired everyone's getting tired no it's not acceptable because you're adults and uh, you're very young so there's no excuse to get tired <laughs> what young and restless whatever it is yeah yeah I think it's more restless than young because I don't see any young in your behavior I see only restless so um, Class is getting heavy. So class is always heavy. So you have to apply your mind. You've come here. Are you come? Are you have come here? Have you come here to drive a rickshaw? <laughs> you have come here to apply your brains. So obviously it's heavy. What did you expect? So no class on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. Okay. So tell me the demanding final. System is demanding. Yes, we should, would you like me to? Would you, would you like me to follow the dictate of the system? Okay, guys. So uh, you can read this definition. This definition can probably be improved, but I wrote this was in 1993. I had only three and a half years experience at that time. So this is a, it's an okay definition still. Okay, you can read this definition. Now you see. Now what happens is now let's learn the market terminology. Okay, let's learn the market terminology and uh, let's be clear about what. So conceptually how you should think about capital market swaps is you should understand why I've called them capital market swaps. Okay. And actually uh, another thing that I want to introduce, uh, let's say without um, <coughs> Okay, let me not complicate this at this point. We will just uh, actually these are all uh, interest rate swaps okay although the market does not use that terminology I'll show you why because every transaction you'll see uh, is actually a this should be here okay this you have to be a little bit careful because All right, I am calling these transactions. So now when you study capital market swaps, you have to study it at two levels. Okay, this is part of your uh, Tanuj has already passed out. Okay, so uh, all right. So please make an effort to understand this because later on it just helps you to understand overall. This needs to be part of your knowledge base and finance. When you're studying capital market swaps, I would like you to study it at two levels. Okay, one is I'm going to give you the correct taxonomy, which is what should have been used for conceptual uh, uh, you know accuracy okay theoretical accuracy but then you have to also study you have to also know what the industry uses what terms the industry uses to refer to these swaps. like just like I told you that I'm calling these capital market swaps to distinguish them from foreign exchange swaps there's another category of swap okay 
but the industry will refer to these only as swaps okay so similarly i'm giving you another constraint now i'm calling these or i'm saying that all of these are interest rate swaps okay i'll explain to you why later on but in the industry when you go what will happen is these are called irs okay these are called interest rate swaps and these are called currency swaps okay so that is what i've used since it, uh, in uh, this was being written in 1993 where I did not have this conception. So uh, here I've written it from this point of view. You see interest rate swaps. So please be very careful here. Okay, I understand you're tired and all that, but just be clear, it's not that complicated. Uh, you have to understand this terminology at two levels. One is what is the conceptually, theoretically correct way to label these uh, transactions, okay, which I'm giving you. On a second level, you have to also be aware of what labels the market uses to refer to these transactions. Is this clear? both the levels you can easily do it it's not so complicated now these the market calls uh, interest rate swaps when there's one currency the market will call it an interest rate swap okay when there's two currencies the market will call it a currency swap okay so this is all that is explained over here you don't need to take any notes i don't know is the font big enough satyam can you read this you can't read anything here if we make it 25 now no okay all right guys now let's try to see i can't bring everything so the first you forget about i'm just going to take it out so that is irs the first guy. can you see what this is no sir you still can't read maybe you should come forward yes sir one step forward what about you rahul can you read okay so if rahul can read that means you come sit next to jayant you can read it okay and where will uh, uh, Ishan come and sit in front of Dina? Then you can also read it. Come, come, both of you come forward. Sina, where will Sina go? Sina and Ishan can come here. I can read. No, no, you can't read. Are you read? Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So Ishan, you can come and sit in front of Dina, and then Satya, you can come and sit in front of Jayan. Don't waste time. Don't waste time in the class. This is also part of your professionalism. When the instruction is given, follow it. Don't, uh, 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 you know, uh, create a uh, drama over it. Okay, guys, now quickly. Quickly, let's finish this, uh, finish this classification. Now you're looking at what the market balance is. Okay, single currency. Read this stuff. Now, let me rest my voice while you guys read these two things. Read these two paragraphs. The first category, I have, I want to capture everything in one view, so I have had to leave out the, I have to cut out the top part of it. The top part is referring to IRS. The A and the B above that, you have interest rate swaps. Okay, these are interest rate swaps. I'm just covering, I'm just pulling it up because I want to show everything in one view. Are you following what I'm saying? It follows what I've already shown you. You already have that conceptual diagram in your head. Yeah. One currency and two currencies, Trust. fixed floating or floating floating. That's all. It's all. Let's start with the first one. IRS, which means one currency. Okay. What is it? Floating fixed or fixed floating, which means depending on what you are receiving or what you are paying. Okay. It's the same thing actually. Floating fixed and fixed floating is the same thing. Like the transaction is the same. I'm just looking at it from this guy's point of view and then this guy's point of view. Okay okay now one floating rate and one fixed rate is this clear one currency you can see the classification those involving only one currency and those involving two currencies okay here you have fixed floating and then you have interest rate basis swaps floating leg on both legs floating rate rates on both legs so this category floating floating one currency here's where you have to be careful about the industry parlance you have to know the industry terminology these are called basis swaps okay strictly speaking interest rate basis swaps so both legs floating one currency these are called interest rate basis swaps okay this is the market uh, terminology what you find in the book is the market terminology okay this is the market terminology in the book so you should learn that also but conceptually you should also have this diagram in your head to understand uh, this kind of uh, you know uh, taxonomy okay now uh, you can see these are called basis swap. These are called fixed floating IRS. Okay, this uh, first A, A is called fixed floating IRS. Now go to currency swaps. Currency swaps you have. If you have fixed rate on one leg, floating rate on one leg, see the category A under currency swaps. 
Two currencies, two types of interest rates. This is called cross currency IRS. Okay. All right. So this is called cross currency IRS. Now here, uh, these are known as also circus swaps. Okay. Now you have fixed, fixed. Uh, the second category is uh, two different currencies. Both legs are fixed. Okay. These are called fixed, fixed currency swaps. They are also called synthetic forward effects because you will see that there is actually a connection to forward foreign exchange rates which we will see later when we study uh, forward foreign exchange this is effectively uh, the same kind of profile as a forward foreign exchange transaction but there's a cash flow difference okay when the cash flows occur in a forward foreign exchange transaction the cash flow all the cash flows occur called synthetic it's called synthetic forward effects because it has the same effect as a forward foreign exchange transaction remember we have one category of transaction here under asset classes markets and instruments okay you have forwards you have currencies and forwards if you have a asset classes currencies and instrument is forwards you can have a tran instrument called fx forward okay fx forward transaction very common transaction for corporate hedging okay or institutional hedging as well so therefore uh, this particular type of this now this capital market swap that I'm referring to okay this uh, currency which the industry will call a, a currency swap okay this currency swap the where they have fixed fixed rates on both the legs fixed rates on both the legs and two different currencies that transaction is called a fixed fixed currency swap it's also called a synthetic forward effects why because it has the same effect as a forward transaction okay but there is a cash flow difference okay that's why it's called a synthetic forward effects okay Synthetic is meant to in indicate the fact that it is not a direct forward effects transaction, but it is synthetically creating the same uh, effect. Okay. All right. Okay. So are you guys following so far? Yeah. This is the market terminology. And the third category is two currencies, both legs floating. That is called, what is that going to be called? Cross currency basis swap. All you have to do is read. You just have to read, but I think even now that is also not possible. Okay, uh, so read uh, the, this third category called cross currency basis swaps. Okay, so conceptually have this framework in your head, have this framework in your head under capital market swaps. I'm going to call all of them interest rate swaps. Okay, uh, but that's not something that the market uses. Okay, so but then these are the transaction. Now, what are these? Are these are called fixed floating interest rate swap? Okay, for the full, it will just be called IRS by the market. Okay, for short, they will just call it IRS. Okay, but to be specific, you should say fixed floating interest rate swap. Okay, under one, with one currency, fixed. Uh, sorry, this this uh, this is not uh, this, this is uh, this the market calls these IRSs and these are called uh, currency swaps. Okay, so let me just. Uh, all right so here you have under irs you have two uh, under interest rate swaps you have two categories for the market this is a fixed floating irs this is what the market will call it okay and this both legs floating sing single currency the market will call it a basis swap okay so an example of a basis swap would be like suppose here i'm just uh, changing this if i change this to floating okay then what will happen is if i change this also to floating then what will happen is this leg will be three month LIBOR and this leg might be three month treasury bill. Okay. Remember two different rates. These are two different rates. Okay. So here you're actually playing on what is called the, what, what spread is this called? <coughs> three month LIBOR and three month treasury bill. No, this name has a, this spread has a name. It's a basis. Ted spread. Ted okay. Spread. So if you are doing a swap, so you can have a, uh, uh, an interest rate swap like this. It will be called an interest rate basis swap, one currency, both legs floating. One example is you can have uh, three month LIBOR on one side and uh, three month treasury bills on one side. Okay. All right. So this might happen if somebody wants, uh, you know, somebody maybe is raised some debt at three month LIBOR and he would much rather be paying interest according to three month treasury bills. So he will do a, a trade in which he will be uh, receiving three month, uh, he will be receiving the three month LIBOR and he'll be passing it on to his uh, FRN investors so that cash flow will cancel out. Get into this mode of looking at swaps as hedge transactions. Imagine there's a loan on the other side, there's a loan on your books and you're using a swap as a hedge. 
okay so if you receive three a three month LIBOR you'll pay it out under the loan and then you'll be left paying a net basis of three month treasury bills you'll be paying interest at the rate of three month treasury bills okay your view might be that three month treasury bill will rate will remain much lower and three month LIBOR might rise a lot okay so this is a basis swap interest rate basis swap floating legs on both the legs uh, floating rates on both the legs let me change it back to fixed okay all right so interest rate basis swap yes yeah Sorry. use the mic use the mic use the mic and speak in english other faculty are also complaining that you they keep on telling you to speak in english and you keep on speaking in hindi Today okay, what is it today? Some special yeah, occasion. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sir, three months LIBOR. Mike is not working. Okay, yes. Sir, yes. so three months LIBOR floating. Yes. So if SCB is paying to ABC is paying to SCB three months LIBOR, and so in return it is getting a three month treasury bill. Yes. So then there should be some basis points also. Because the treasury is always lower than my work. No, 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 no. That's that's the. I mean, basically, yeah. It will not be flat. It will not be flat. So if you agree to, I understand what you're saying. If you're saying that SCB has to pay, say, three month LIBOR on the basis of three month LIBOR, and I'm not changing this fixed rate here. Let it remain fixed. But we are going to assume it as three month T bill. Okay. Okay. So the exchange will not be equivalent. Okay. So obviously, if you are going to receive the three month bill rate. Okay, and you are going to be paying the three month LIBOR rate. Okay, you would want to have some kind of because this rate is at a higher rate. Okay, so you might want to have a uh, you would expect a LIBOR with margin some margin below LIBOR. Okay, but then again, your credit rating also matters because it depends on what ABC's credit rating is. If your credit rating is very poor, because that will also get factored into the swap. If your credit rating is very poor, you might have to pay a margin above LIBOR. Yeah. So that will be the credit spread over LIBOR. Okay, clear. Okay, so it depends on where, where, where it depends on what your credit rating is also. But you're right that the two rates are not equivalent. The two rates are not equivalent. Okay, right. Okay. So um, all right. So what what are we saying here? Just quickly going through this framework and going through the numbers, uh, through the names. This is called a fixed floating IRS in the market, or just called an IRS. You're following my cursor. Uh, this is called a interest rate basis swap under currency swap this category is called currency swap by the market and here you have a fixed floating irs this will be called a, you can read all the terms from the book okay this is called a fixed floating irs okay this is called a cross currency basis swap okay this is called a cross currency basis swap and this is called a uh, fixed fixed currency swap also called a synthetic forward effects is this clear okay now understand why i am calling it interest rate swaps conceptually okay why am i calling it conceptually interesting now here's the problem the market classification is understand this taxonomy problem okay ayush you managed to score in the last over it's been a long time ayush has not scored for a long time which is uh, uh, very surprising okay so like for a long there was a time in between where Federer was not winning any tournaments for two or three years yeah. and people said he should retire but then he came back where is Ayush which group Akanksha Akanksha you should, <laughs> should put tape on his mouth okay okay all right okay so where are we now one minute <laughs> Uh, one minute. <coughs> oh, we have four minutes. One sec. One sec. Be be careful. We have to use the time. We have to use the time well. Understand this log. Understand this logic very well. Okay. Why am I calling it interest rates? So the market taxonomy. Okay. The market taxonomy, which you will see reflected in the book as well. Okay. That the market taxonomy is that these swaps are called interest rate swaps and these swaps are called currency swaps okay so understand this point now this is like if i classify that uh, i've already discussed this many times before that if i classify this population into boys and girls that means it the boys are not girls and the girls are not boys okay so if you're doing this that means you're saying that whatever you're calling currency swap is yeah. not an interest rate swap yes okay 
Now, what is an interest rate? If you take a simple plain meaning rule application of the interest rate swap uh, expression, okay? What does it mean? It's a swap. You know what a swap is? A swap is an exchange. One party gives something and receives something else. So you are receiving uh, and you are swapping interest rates, okay? And on the one hand, you are saying that any such transaction, you are calling it a currency swap and the other category is interest rate swap. So therefore, this category is not an interest rate swap. But actually, if you see this, what is happening here? If you go to page number 14, you see this example that we looked at in page, on page number 14, which is here. Let's look at this interest rate swap uh, cross-currency IRS. Now you know this is called a cross-currency IRS between XYZ and SCB. What is happening here? Is there an exchange of interest rates or not? Yes. <laughs> you are exchanging interest burdens. Yes. You are exchanging one interest burden for the other. So there is always in all of these transactions, if you can go back and perform a check for yourself, in every such, the five of these transactions, we discussed five structures. Yes. In every structure, there is always going to be an exchange of interest burdens, okay. either in the same currency or in two different currencies. There is always an exchange of interest burdens. So therefore, all of these should be called interest rate swaps because you are actually swapping interest rates. Okay, so conceptually, the taxonomy that I've done here, this is the better taxonomy that all of these are interest rate swaps and just that you have to divide them in one currency, two currency, fixed floating. So this taxonomy which the market uses is not theoretically correct. Okay, but the market is the market. Okay, so the market has got used to this terminology. So when you go into the market, don't refer to a, 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 a fixed floating uh, IRS with two currencies. Don't call it an interest rate swap. You have to call it a cross currency IRS. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. So you have to study this subject at two levels. One is conceptually, what is the correct answer? Okay, correct way to look at it. And also you have to know what the market uses, what lingo the market uses. Okay, because you have not come here to drive rickshaws. You have come here to learn how to think uh, like an MBA finance student. Is this clear? Okay, you can get 20, 40 seconds. All right, you can go. Any questions? Anybody? Anyone has a technical question? Sahil, you have a technical question in English? You have a question? Have a question. Bring the mic. Give him the mic. Let's record your question. There is no such thing as a bad question. Okay, sir. Yes. You guys can go. The rest of you can go. The class is dismissed. Yes. Sir, that you said in one leg. Mic is not working. Use the mic because the background noise. Yes. Sir, use the mic. I'm using the mic. Yeah. So you just use it. Your voice has to come through the mic. Yes. Yeah. Sir, underlying position is three month I bought. In that uh, cross currency interest rate. In this example. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Thibault, 50 basis points, it is the underlying position. Mike is, voice is not coming to the mic. So the underlying position. Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Underlying position is 3 months. Uh, here. Underlying position is here. Yes, sir. this is the underlying position. A hedge position is the interest rate. So 10.5 is the. This is the hedge position. Yes, sir. the whole one. This is not the hedge position. This is the hedge transaction. Sir, and now, this is also the position now. Yeah, I mean net periodic payment position. Is this. Now the net is 10.5 sterling. Yes. Now sir, this net position can again be hedged by 10.5 by uh, dollar transaction, sir, because you have to pay in sterling. But this is a US company. No, no, no. The background I gave you was that XYZ is a British company with revenues only in British pounds. Now, if the, if the company would have been a British company, a US company, then so this 10.5 uh, sterling will again have to be hedged by dollars. No, but in that case, they, if they were a US company, if they were a US company, they would have had some revenues, at least if not all revenues. In US dollars, in which case they would be happy with 
you have stored data yeah, because there is no liability in the scratch. Awesome. Right? Remember the reason that XYZ Corp being a British company is going in for this kind of a convoluted structure is because they are only able to issue debt, the appetite for debt is only in the US dollar floating rate markets. Yes, sir. So they have to go where the customer is. Yes, sir. But that's not what they want to issue. That they don't want that liability profile. They want a liability profile which is six fixed rate sterling. So that's that's why they that's why they engage in what is called swap driven issuance. They issue floating rate debt in US dollars, which is what they can afford to issue when the pricing is good. And then they use a cross currency IRS to convert their liability profile to what they want. Just the desired liability profile. So you get to see how these capital market swaps can be used to hedge underlying loan positions, liability positions, and how the concept of swap driven financing, how the capital markets are connected to the uh, cap, uh, to the swap markets all these things are important as part of your understanding of debt capital markets yeah clear now okay good all right so